Welcome back and welcome to this week's media panel with Metro editor Simon Wilson. Hi Simon, thanks Good for coming morning. in. So we have a big change this week coming in. The Herald, the national newspaper, it's going compact. Why well, is it going compact? Like the way you say it's an Auckland of the national newspaper. It's the Auckland newspaper, of course, which really? sells throughout the top half of the North Island oh, okay. and elsewhere, but really it's... Uh, it's well, I'm a Cantab, compact. you see, yeah, but still. Yeah. I always thought we referred to it as the national yeah. newspaper. We don't. Oh, goodness Got to me. Too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Christchurch and Wellington will be flicking off the channel right yes, now. Going, going tabloid, as, as you say. Um, compact is, uh, mm. is, is the word. Um, I think the first thing to say about that is that the Herald really has been a, uh, a tabloid-style newspaper in many ways for some time. I mean, if you look at their front page, it's very common that there'll be just a single story on the front page with a large photo. Great for the photo. Um, but there's been so often uh, a, an overstatement of the significance of, of that front page story, and, and that's a kind of tabloidy thing. One recent example that isn't in the crime and, and shock horror area was the uh, the Olympics when, when New Zealand won its first first medal in the Olympics. It was a bronze, bronze medal only. Of course, you know, what we all really knew was that we were hoping for something better than bronze. We got our medal, was the big headline, screamed at us, and it was the whole front page. It was actually not the significant news or anything like it uh, that the Herald uh, must have known themselves uh, that they were pretending it was. The editors yeah. say that it may be tabloid in shape or what we typically associate with a tabloid newspaper, the compact form. They said they won't be going tabloid, though, I imagine you would argue, well, I'll, as I'll, you just I'll, yeah, but they pretty in, many, much have. in many respects they have already. There are some other things that the Herald does, which I think it does very well. Um, they have renewed their commitment to uh, what you might call civic news. They have, they have what they call a metro page, um, but they do have journalists who are uh, experts in uh, reporting on what's happening around the city uh, in terms of the politics and the economics and the, the social lives and what's happening in the suburbs. Uh, and I think those things haven't really diminished, and that's a very important role for any newspaper. Um, okay. you know, so, so there is a strength there. There, but um, of course what's, what's the trigger point for going compact though what at the end of the day behind the scenes is the reason why they've made their paper smaller well um, new, the print media uh, everywhere I mean I, I work in a magazine and magazines and, and newspapers are in different situations internationally uh, magazines uh, we are producing something that we know that if we get it right uh, there is a market for it uh, advertisers like it and readers like it that thing you hold in your hands and come to love because of the quality of what we do and the photography and the writing and so on. Newspapers, because they're more news oriented, um, have a, 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 a a shorter lifespan, if you like. Um, they're much more about delivering information quickly and efficiently that you want now, and then you move on, you get the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Um, so the whole way in which they work uh, is changing because of the competition from new media. And that competition comes uh, for readers, because if you've got a smartphone or an iPad or you're at your computer at work, you can you can get the news in, in so easily and so more flexibly than you used to from the newspapers. So there's one thing there. That comes from uh, advertising where advertisers are seduced by the idea uh, that it, maybe it's the sexy and trendy thing to be on the internet, to be on websites, to be on blogs and so on, instead of uh, uh, being in the print media. And that makes it harder, uh, harder for them as well. Um, what we've got in newspapers is a really significant problem that some readers have moved away uh, for various reasons, some advertisers have moved away, but they've moved away uh, in a form that makes it very hard for, for the media companies to continue to make a profit. Media companies have to make a profit or they can't do their business. It's the same as everybody else. Uh, and so what that, what's happened is that newspapers, if you lose you know, 20 per cent of your income stream, that's more than your profit anyway. It, it, it uh, really challenges your viability. But that hasn't gone to the internet, and where everybody says it's gone, because nobody's making money out of the internet in that way. So yes. it's not just about yes. the, you know, all the media companies are trying to reposition themselves in relation to new media, but nobody has developed really effective models of, of doing it uh, so they can make money from it. So the newspapers have to uh, have to counter that uh, by being more cost efficient. Uh, so, you know, that the, the tabloid form means uh, your paper price is cheaper, your print price is cheaper. Right. Um, you know, those things are, are, are driving it. And then, of course, if you're producing newspapers where there's a, just one story on a page and so on, it feels like it should be on a smaller thing anyway, so uh, it feels easier. Who's still yeah. buying newspapers? I would suspect yeah. probably no one under the age of 40, probably. Well, I don't know that it's no one. Well, but during uh, the week, I mean. That, Sunday's different, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. But um, it is harder, yes, to attract a, a younger reader. Um, and it's also harder to attract professional readers, too. Uh, the people who do do use their uh, electronic uh, media to get, 
get the news. Uh, so you know they're being they're being attacked in, in both those ways, and but all those sorts of markets are important to advertisers too. So you sell a magazine in Auckland. Uh, I imagine that throws up some complexities. Is it? difficult to sell newspapers in Auckland? Well, the, the Herald puts an awful lot of effort into subscriptions. Um, all print media will work hard on subscriptions because it's, you know, money in the bank. Um, the Herald uh, makes offers, bonus offers, all the time. They bundle up with uh, magazines. Uh, they, they make other offers with books and, and various other things that they do uh, to try and keep their subscription level up. There are men on the street selling the paper. You've got to figure that they're not making money doing that, but it's, it's somebody standing there advertising the product. You know, that, that everybody in the CBD walks past, uh, so that's valuable to them in that way. Um, and of course there's a lot of countertop sales in, in dairies and, and supermarkets and so on. Um, all of those things add up, you know, but to yes. a lesser level than they used to. Okay, let's have a look at um, how the, the new compact Herald will look. I'd like to get your perspective on what you make of this. It's just going with a, a rather gothic styled H instead of the New Zealand Herald emblazoned across the top. That's right. So that that Gothic uh, H, uh, that that's an echo of the original New Zealand Herald uh, lettering. That's that is more or less their original H. Um, I think the H is a good idea. I, I like it. I think uh, it's a signal to readers to look again, and that's what you're trying to do with an with an institutionalised uh, media. Uh, Thing like that, you, you, you've always got to say you thought you knew what we, we were, but actually we think we've changed, we think we're better now, so you want them to come back and look again. The H uh, signals that, in, in a way signals it more than the different size. They've really uh, launched to a big uh, promotional sort of ad advertising campaign to try and promote mm. this newspaper as well. They really want it to sell. Do you think it'll be nervous times for the people of the Herald? Oh, I think so. But then, you know, if you work in media, it's nervous times all the mm. time. Um, so I don't know that um, this would make it more, that this would make them more nervous. Um, they work for a company that has said, right, it's time for, to, to take some bold moves uh, yes. to be significantly different. And, and I think probably if that makes people nervous, well, it shouldn't, because that's what media companies have to do. OK, if you look further down uh, the country, uh, the Dominion Post, the Press, the Otago Daily Times, all still in broadsheet. Do, will they be watching closely? Do you think they will ever go uh, compact? I, um, it's hard to know what will happen in the future in print media. You know, it's very yes. hard to answer those questions because the, the, the big question, the big answer, we don't know what it is. Nobody yet knows how money is going to be made out of print media in 10 years' time. Mm. Um, it's a little easier to see it in other media, how it might be working, but in print media it's extremely hard to know. And that's particularly true in newspapers. Okay. Uh, newspapers may die, newspapers may um, bounce back, M newspapers may find that actually, you know, you know there's, a, there's a resurgence of people going, oh, I'm sick of these, these machines, yes. I, want, I want my paper back. So there are some new columnists, um, Jeremy Wells, Deborah Hill Cohn, Toby Manhire among them, uh, Reese Darby. That's oh, right. Yes. Reese is there for entertainment value. Um, Jeremy Wells, and it's not quite clear what he's going to do yet. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, Deborah Hill Cohn, uh, I think, is one of the finest uh, writers in the country, uh, but uh, she wrote for the Her business section of the Herald for uh, a couple of years before she stopped writing uh, this year, um, and it was flabby work. Um, I mean, I'm saying this because I've told her that, and I thought she could do so much better. So I'm hoping she's coming back to do a whole lot better. Toby Manhire, again, a fine writer, but he's in the listener every week already, and he's online with them. So if you like Toby's stuff, um, you can already get it. I, I don't see the value for, to the Herald in repeating what another of the publications in their own stable, because the Herald and the Listener are the same company, I don't see the value to them um, right. uh, and to the Listener. The Listener must be absolutely furious uh, that that's happening. I think that's, that's shortchanging readers uh, to do that. OK, let's talk at the role of uh, women in the media too. Uh, we have Jo Norris, uh, who's just been appointed as editor of the press. Yeah. Already Bernadette Courtney is the editor of the Dominion Post. What do you think women bring uh, to editorships, if well, you like? Well, Rachel, I think they bring journalism skills and management skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, my experience, I work in a company where there are, I think there are 13 editors, so three of us are men. Uh, many of the titles are women's magazines, so you would expect them to have um, women editors. But even where uh, a, company, a magazine like North and South, for example, mm. which is a stable mate of ours, a woman editor. Um, most of the women, uh, most of the magazines, it could have a man or a woman. Um, it's, yes. it's, um, there are more women than men. I don't know that you'd really want to start arguing there was a significant difference. Um, if you get to the level, if you have the particular skill set to be an editor, which is about um, basically being able to cope with stress and, and, and just keep your cool and keep it going mm. out the door. Um, 
uh, if you have that, um, I think you've probably got a, a, a kind of human skill set that, that um, for better or worse. Yes, I mean, I, I do. I guess my point is, is that um, you know sometimes women do struggle to break through in, in any level of media at times. You know, sometimes credibility, and I'm talking about television here as well. Current affairs tends to come in the form of a middle-aged man in a suit. You know, uh, it's good to see more women involved yeah. at these upper levels. Um, I. I'm sure there are women journalists all over the country who will say, yes, um, I, I got stopped, um, I, was, I wanted to rise higher. But my perception has been that that's maybe less true uh, than you might think. There are, there are always a lot of men who go, me, 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 I want it, I want it to be me. Um, and there are always a number of women also who go, well, i actually rather be a writing journalist or a reporter than, than go into management. Um, and maybe those things are different. Um, but um, I don't think it is particularly difficult in our industry for women to rise up to editorial position. That's good. Mm. Pleased to hear it. All right. Simon Wilson, editor of Metro. Very much appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.